This video was brought to you by The Great Courses Plus. This is a pulse jet engine. In its simplest form consists of a jar with a hole on top and a little bit of alcohol inside that is able to create pulsated combustions without the aid of valves or complex mechanisms. As the alcohol burns rapidly, it expels the gases inside the jar through the constricting hole on top. Because air is a compressible fluid, it acts like a spring that once stretched pulls part of the burning mixture back inside, along with a portion of fresh air. With a renewed parcel of atmospheric oxygen and a constant source of evaporating fuel, the jam jar pulse jet will continue to deflagrate for several seconds. Of course that for that to happen, the jar needs to be the right shape, the hole needs to be the right size, and the quantity and temperature of the alcohol needs to be just perfect. To get more consistent results the design should be improved. And in fact, it was. More than 100 years ago, Ingenious engineers used two holes instead of one, plugged one of the holes with a one-way valve, optimized the shape of the engine, and used a better fuel. This design yielded much better results, but as usual with everything involving explosions, it was inevitably turned into a weapon. In 1939, at the beginning of the Second World War, Nazi engineers started developing a series of engines weapons that would use the pulse jet engine to propel bombs through the air. The most famous one was the V-1 Flying Bomb, a missile specifically designed to bombard England. At peak, more than 100 V-1s a day were fired at Southeast England, almost 10,000 in total. These bombs were launched by the German forces from the French coast into England, because the pulse jets that thrusted the bombs through the air weren't able to run for much longer than half an hour. This is a big limitation of the valve pulse jet engine, and that's because it uses flap valves. A flap valve is a one-way valve that allows air to flow to the inside of the engine, but blocks the explosion gases from escaping through that end. This increases the overall thrust efficiency of the engine. But because these engines run at insanely high temperatures, with over 50 pulses per second, the moving parts on the valves get destroyed in no time. This was not a problem for the V1 flying bomb, because in the end the entire thing would get destroyed anyway. It's a bomb. But what if you wanted the engine to last longer? What if you wanted to use the pulse jet for something less destructive and more beneficial to mankind? Well, this dilemma attracted the attention of one of the most ingenious inventors of the 20th century. Of course I'm talking about the one and only… Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla, which is nowadays mistaken for a car floating in space, wanted to use the pulse jet engine to produce electricity. His idea was to connect the pulse jet engine to his Tesla turbine to make it spin at very high speed. For this to work, the generator would have to run for much longer than just half an hour, so Tesla turned his attention into fixing the valve problem, and as far as I know, he did. In 1920, Nikola Tesla registered a patent for a one-way valve that had no moving parts. In its simplicity, was just a piece of metal with an ingenious path carved into it. And that path was the secret recipe. If we take a closer look at the valve, it's not hard to understand that a fluid trying to cross the device in one way has an easy and almost straightforward line to flow through, but when the valve is reversed, it becomes much harder. The path creates counter flows that increase the resistance significantly. How significantly? Well, not enough to completely block flow like a conventional one-way valve. And that's the reason why Tesla never called it the valve in the first place, but instead a valvular conduit, which has different levels of resistance for the two directions of flow. At the difference in resistance, we give the name of diodicity, as in diode. And the highest diodicity in Tesla valves is achieved with interrupted high speed flow. That's why it's such a good idea to strap it to a pulse jet engine. If you follow my channel, you probably know that I tried to do just that in a recent video. 
I created a heat resistant Tesla valve that I attached to a pulse jet engine. Unfortunately that didn't work as well as I expected. And I think is because I need to understand better the pulse jet engine and the Tesla valve. So in this video let's start with the valve. For starters I wanted to create a visual representation of how the Tesla valve works. So I had an idea in which I would run a flow of paint of different colors through a Tesla valve and record it in slow motion. For that I designed and 3D printed a modified version of the Tesla valve with two separate inlets so I could push two different colors of paint into the valve using syringes. Also I got some help. Look at that! Look at that! Uh, <laughs> it's <definitely. laughs> it is not bowling. It's science. Meet my sister Katarina. She is what you would call an artiste. She is the one that painted my rig in a rock, embellished my caliper casing, and drew the binary portraits that are normally in the background of my videos. By the way, you guys are always asking me why I have a portrait of Nikola Tesla right next to a portrait of Severus Snape. The reason is simple. Why not? Anyway, this is all to say that my sister knows about paint, so she gave me a hand. Because I was pressing the syringes and my sister Katarina was holding the bucket in which the paint was falling into, I needed someone to manage the slow motion camera. Meet my sister Luana, a crazy 11 years old that just starts laughing for no apparent reason. <laughs> she is not an artist, but she can definitely push a button. Ah! So much blood! <laughs> okay, let's see how the footage is. As you can see, the red stream that represents a counterflow pushes the main flow out of course into another counterflow, what increases the distance traveled and the degree of resistance offered by the valve. The more modules you stack up in a valve, the better it will work. These tests were done in the reverse direction, or direction of most resistance. Here is a test I made using only blue paint on the original design of the Tesla valve, this time in the forward direction, or direction of least resistance. As you can see, the paint is able to go through the valve with almost no resistance. I recorded some more tests using different designs, so I could have an idea of which worked best. These tests are a great way of visualizing the working concept of the valvular conduit, but they are not good to measure performance, because I use two inlets and two different sources of pressure, which in the end is cheating. When practically using a Tesla valve I will only have one inlet and one outlet, so I needed a better way to get a good reading on the performance of the design. To do that I used computer simulation. I found this free software called FlowSquare that allows you to do 2D flow simulations in whatever shape you want to. Really, any shape. I made some flow simulations for different designs using only one module. I tested the original patent design, a teardrop shape design and the design that I found on a scientific article published by a guy called Gamboa. Gamboa made some simulations with this specific design and apparently his version is the bee's knees of Tesla valve designs, so I copied it. On the screen you can see the simulations I made. They are color coded to represent the speed of the fluid. The redder, the faster. The bluer, the slower. In all three designs the fluid doesn't lose a lot of speed in the forward direction. It's almost red at the end, which means the velocity was mostly conserved. In the reverse direction we have another story. It's perceivable that the speed is decreased. We no longer have a deep red, but a pale orange or in the case of the Gamboa and teardrop shape designs, a weak yellow. These are interesting results, because what this tells me is that even with just a module, the speed is decreased. Nonetheless, the simulation is not conclusive, because a simulation is one thing, but reality is another, right? Reality isn't a simulation. In a world where knowledge is power, one man will try to answer the most important question in existence. Why? Why? Why doesn't Clue stick to the side of the bottle? To achieve his goal, he will need the help of his wise mentor. You have to choose, Jupiga. A life of fantasy, social media articles, and conspiracy theories, or the reality 
with fact checking, Neil deGrasse Tyson, and way too much math. Do you want to know the true? The true about glue? Watch as our hero embarks on a journey of learning by plugging himself into the Great Courses Plus. The Great Courses Plus is a virtual simulation of knowledge on the inner web, also known as video learning service, with top-notch lectures and courses taught by great professors from Ivy League universities. You will certainly find your answer there. With access to a huge library of over 11,000 video lectures about anything and everything, our protagonist learned more than he could ever expect. I know chemistry. Show me. The glue has water in it, and because for the glue to dry the water needs to evaporate and be in contact with air, well, there's not enough air inside of the bottle, so the glue doesn't stick to the inside of the bottle. What about super glue? I... I... I don't know. I need to get back. Staring, my beautiful mustache, my favorite sister, my crazy sister, and the Great Courses Plus, which is a real video learning service. Now really, the Great Courses Plus is a great video learning service, and they were nice enough to sponsor my video. They have a great course that is called Inventions That Change the World, which talks about great inventions like the airplane, the steam engine, and the electric lighting and power which features Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison. Give it a try and use the link thegreatcoursesplus.com slash Integza in the description below for a free trial. Back to the video. Simulations aside, I wanted to do some practical tests, so I could have a concrete way of measuring the performance of the three designs I just mentioned. So here is what I did. I 3D printed the three designs in orange resin with five modules each, which I isolated with an acrylic sheet so I could record what's going on. On these valves the path has 1mm in width and 1mm in height. Then I created a simple test bench that I built using some MDF boards I had laying around and some 3D printed parts. The idea was to use a 2kg weight to push the syringe filled with blue paint that would force the paint across the valves in both directions. In this way I would have a constant force pushing the syringe in every single test and in the end I could compare how long it took the syringe to displace a certain amount of fluid. To evaluate the Tesla valve, one needs to take into consideration how well it works in both directions. It needs to block as much flow as possible in the reverse direction, but it cannot produce too much resistance in the forward direction. So the way I found to rate the performance of the Tesla valves was by using the ratio between the time it takes in the reverse direction over the time it takes in the forward direction. I recorded the test and got a ratio of 1.05 for the teardrop shaped Tesla valve, a ratio of 1 for the patent designed Tesla valve, and a ratio of 1.4 for the Gamboa valve. Even though the Gamboa valve had a somewhat positive result, these results are, pardon my French, but the fault is not on the valve, but in me. I spent the entire video saying that this valve was created to work with high speed gases and I test them with a slow flowing liquid. That's not right. I still need a constant source of force though, so I can legitimately compare the performance of the valves. Where can I find a source of high-speed gas at constant pressure? So yeah, I use my compressor. Duh! Once more I attach the valves to a syringe and unleash some high-speed air through the valves. <coughs> I perform tests at 2 bars of pressure and 8 bars of pressure, which is the maximum my compressor can reach. <coughs> I measure the time the piston of the syringe took to go from 0 to 100 milliliters. The best results came from the teardrop shaped Tesla valve, with a ratio of 2.16 at 2 bars and 2.37 at 8 bars. The Gamboa valve also performed decently, with a ratio of 1.8 at 2 bars and 1.9 at 8 bars. And finally the least performing was the original design, with a ratio of about 1.6 at both pressures. To be honest I'm not surprised that the original design was not the one performing the best because this design was meant as an illustration on the pattern, and not the final product. Now that I have a better idea of what works best, I can start working in a more efficient and compact design. The ultimate test will be to see if I can make it work with the Pulse Jet engine, but to do that I need to build one first. As always I reach out to you guys, 
Leave your suggestions on the comment section below. They are really helpful. And actually, the idea to use paint on the Tesla Vol came from one of your comments. Talking about comments, in my last video, I asked you guys to post a comment baptizing my new resin 3D printer, the Anet N4. And you guys had a lot of suggestions. Like, a lot, a lot. We have Anet, which apparently is Viennese slang for cute and pretty. We have Gooey Cello, which is an homage to an American actress called Annette Funicello. The more you know. Fred Kuhlman suggested Marie Antoinette, which was the last queen of France before the French Revolution. Cool, man. We have Cristalina, Mr. Ego, Resinet, The White Pigeon, Baby Got Back, Molten Model Maker, Tangerine Dream, and Uvula. I could be here all day and I wouldn't list all your suggestions. But apparently, the one you liked the most was named by Mr. Puddles, which says... Call it Edison, because imagine Edison recreating Tesla's inventions and getting credit for it. Nice! So from now on, the Anet N4 shall be known as Edison. You are baptized, my child! In my last video, I also said that the winning suggestion would win a printer exactly like Edison. And I'm a man of my word. But Mr. Puddles still hasn't replied to my emails. I can't send you the printer if I don't have an address, you doofus. Anyway, this is everything for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya!